Hello, how's everybody doing? Well, with the advent of Lightroom version 12.3, we have received some great new tools that we can use in Lightroom. And I'm sure you've probably seen a dozen or more videos covering all these tools. But there are some finer points to these tools that uh, I haven't seen in a lot of these videos. And I thought I would cover them in a real short video here. To start out with, we're going to look at uh, our develop module. And as you can see, uh, we have these new eyeballs that shows us what has been used. So if the light eyeball is lit up, that means there's been some changes in place uh, on this photograph. Now you have the option of choosing uh, to see the switches, the light switches that we used to have. If you hold your option key down, you can see you have light switches again, uh, but it works a little differently. If you turn off the light switch and release, you'll see the eyeball has a slash through it that means that tab is completely ineffective now. It can't be used and it can't be turned back on by clicking on the eyeball. You have to click on the option key, turn the switch back on, and then it'll operate as we see it in 12.3 by clicking on it and see the changes that we have in place. So once you flip that switch off, that kills that tab completely uh, until you switch, switch it back on by using the alt or option key. Also, they've given us uh, some indicators here in the tab up above to sh kind of remind you of what you've used. So in the editing tab, we've made some changes. We've made some changes in the cropping tool and we've done some masking as you can see here. Now there might be an occasion that you see one of these little dots under the masking tool or the content aware tool that the dot is red. And that means that it, uh, the Photograph is not in sync in Lightroom in the XMP file. And that happens when we have a mask in place and we run some kind of content aware tool over that mask. That requires a manual update. Let me show you how that happens. So if we look at our mask here, you can see we have a mask on our foreground. I'm going to go ahead and grab the content aware tool and I'm going to wipe out the sailboat right here. Now when we do that, it does wipe out the sailboat, but as you can see, under our mask we now have a red dot. And that means that the XMP file is not in sync. It's real easy to fix. If you ever have a red dot under your mask or under your Content Aware tool, just go to any one of your masks here to the three dots, click on them, and click Update AI Masks. When you do that, it'll update the XMP file It'll turn the red dot off back to white showing that you have changes in that masking module and you're all good to go. There is also a new option with, uh, you know, a lot of people are using uh, Photoshop beta version because of that new removal tool. It's just so fantastic that they're really running it a lot. In the newest version of Lightroom, you now can change your external editor to a different version of Light, uh, the Photoshop. So you're going to go to Preferences, External Editing, and the Photoshop version. Before, it was just Photoshop. You know, now you have the way to change it. So now if I wanted to make Photoshop beta, my go-to application when I'm doing external editing in Photoshop from Lightroom, I now can do it from here instead of the regular version. And it's easy to flip it on back and forth. It'll save you some time. If you're getting really deep into using the beta version and you're getting tired of opening up uh, into a different version of Photoshop rather than the, the beta one, this is your way to change it. All right, so let's go to the last one and that has to do with denoise. This is a really good feature, uh, and a lot of people have had some good comments on it and, and good results. Uh, there are about four ways that you can launch Denoise or Enhance on your photographs. When you're in the Library module, you can go under Photo, Enhance, and it will launch the Enhance window so you can use Denoise. You also can get to it the same way in the Develop module by going to Develop, Photo, enhance. Another way is to hover over your picture, right click, choose enhance. And of course the default way is to come over to your tabs, go to the details screen, and you have your denoise button here. Now uh, if you want to process more than one photo at a time, you can do that too. If you highlight, we'll say three photos here, we can go to denoise, 
And what it's going to do, it's going to bring in all those photographs into the Enhance module. You're only going to see the very first one that you selected. All right. You won't see all of them. So you've got to take it into account that whatever denoise amount I put in here, that it's going to be applied to all, all the photographs. Now, once you have that selected, you can see right here, Enhance Three Images. If I click on this, it will then process all those three at one time as a batch. Also, if you want to process the photo, you, you know what, you know, you have it set at 100%. You know always you're going to process at 100%. You can now hold down the Option or Alternate key on Windows and click Denoise. And when you do that, it will automatically launch the content. I mean, it will uh, launch the Enhance Denoise, as you can see right here. It's starting right now, creating a DNG file with Denoise without going through the window. So if you know what your Denoise level is, it's going to grab the last value that you used and it's going to go ahead and start processing that file so that you don't have to go through that window and save you some time. All right, as a last note, I just want to remind everybody that you can't run denoise more than once on a photo. When denoise is run on your raw file, it creates a DNG and it's not going to let you run denoise again on the DNG. It is also not going to let you run the enhancement tool on a DNG file that's been run through denoise. All right, so that means the enhancement tool effectively creates a 50% increase in your pixels so you can get uh, a larger photo uh, out of the, your original RAW file. If you want to do that, or if you want to run denoise twice on a picture, what you'll have to do is, and we'll just pretend like this is your file here, uh, either a DAG or RAW file. What you'll have to do is go here to export, and you want to export the file as a TIFF file. Once you export it as a TIFF file, you can find it in Lightroom, and then you can run the denoise or the enhancement tool on it uh, again. I hope these tips help you out. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email uh, to ask any questions or I can provide any help that you need. Thanks. Talk to you all soon.